Hi there, it's me, Jeanette, from The Raw Reset. I am the co-founder here, and I come to you live every Sunday at 3.06 Eastern Standard Time to share about the alkaline acid balance, regenerative healing, and uh, yeah, I'm just really excited for today because I have Boris joining me, and I'm gonna see if I can connect him right now. He is a co-owner at the Fruit Haven Ecuador. So let's see if we can connect. And if you're just joining, please leave a comment. Let us know that you're here because this Hello. way we can see that you're here. Hey, Boris, how's it going? <laughs> Great. Just, I, yeah. I'm so excited that you're here. Wow. Yeah, we connected. Took a while to get on. <laughs> yes, you guys had some internet troubles I hear in the jungle, yeah? Yeah, once in a while, it's not too often. Actually, also power issues, and yeah, this is the rainy season, so we got flooded, and there was a lot of mess going on, but it's fine now, mostly. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so happy this is working out. I have, been, I have been following your YouTube channel. Sorry, as I just fix my camera. Um, yeah, your YouTube channel, is it, uh, can you remind us uh, what the uh, yeah, channel is? Adventure Boris. Fruit Adventure, Fruit Adventure Boris, Boris yes. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. so fun. And what is your cat's name? Because your cat is oh, like a cat? star in these videos. <laughs> yeah. Who is it? He's, um, we just name him Cat. We don't have, uh, we have some cat. community <laughs> meetings. And we decided we'll keep it as Cat or he has his own Instagram. So you can check him out at Fruit Kitty Cat. <laughs> Fruit kitty cat. That is awesome. I can't even believe yeah. he eats cucumber and everything. This is so fun. Yeah, he likes. Oh, how do I? Re okay, how do I remove the comments or something? I don't know. You All can right, just let matter. them flow. It's it's kind of yeah. nice because this way um, our members might have some questions oh, for you I as well. Them. I yeah. know that I have a lot of questions for Boris. Sorry, Boris, <laughs> nice. to talk over you. I just want to welcome anyone who's jumping on this live. I see that Jessica, you've joined us. Thank you so much. Oh, and all the ladies from Agro Trading are there. So we're getting through yep. overnight air, Boris. You might have seen from Ecuador, oh. Colombia, yeah, and uh, Cuba. And these are the beautiful women that are hooking us up with the best fruit in Toronto. But I just really like I'm so honored to have you. I just really appreciate your time. I want to kind of get to these questions that I have prepared because really I like to just stay on live for about 45 minutes. Because we have a guest, if you're willing to stay a little bit over, that would be really nice. We could just flow sure. and see maybe you have an hour for us. I'm not sure. Yeah. Really yeah, nice. Maybe, so. maybe while I pull up the questions, I'm just kind of thinking that people might be kind of curious because I know you live a raw vegan lifestyle. Would you be willing to share with us what you ate today just while I pull up the questions? Oh, yeah, let me see. Well, I had some lemon juice straight from the lemon tree here. And I had some katuk, which is this uh, delicious green leaf. It has like a nutty flavor. Uh, and that grows right next Tastes to like it. Tastes like peanut butter. I've tried it. It's oh, you so tried good. that one? Nice. <laughs> oh my god, I love it in salads. How do you just do you just eat yeah. it just straight up or do you put it? Well, yeah, it depends. Oh this today I just was feeling like eating it, so I just ate some and while I was picking the lemons and then uh what else did I eat? I don't remember now. Okay. Oh, yeah, I know I had a it's papaya like... also from the land. <laughs> a papaya from the land and what else? I had something <laughs> well, I forget. Yeah, it was probably some yeah, so basically most, most of what I eat, I try to eat from the land, but we can't always have it. So we do buy stuff from the market as well. And we have some shops nearby and stuff. So, and neighbors also growing things. So it's really nice to have fresh This is foods, amazing. Like really super ripe. <laughs> You're so inspiring, Boris. Like I really commend you for just the lifestyle that you've chosen, like to be able to pick up and just leave this beautiful city of Toronto, Canada, and go live this yeah. like more simple life where you're eating off the land and you're working in permaculture design and all of this, like you've really followed your heart. And I just think that is so inspirational for our members here. So thank you so much for joining us in the Raw Reset private group. Candy and I have put yeah. this together thank and 
Candy was so encouraging for me to interview you because she's come out to Ecuador. She's come to the Fruit Haven Eco Village oh, and right. she knows you personally. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, apparently you speak like five languages or so. She's like, you have well, to have Boris. He's like the smartest four. guy. <laughs> <laughs> four languages? That's still amazing. That's amazing. So could you maybe start off by telling us, and by the way, if anybody's just tuning in, just let us know any questions for Boris as they come up, because this is what he's here for, is to share and enlighten us on some beautiful ways of becoming more um, raw vegan or living a bit more um, you know, alkaline and uh, raw diet and also a sustainable lifestyle. So people can ask us questions as we go, but maybe you want to start off by just telling us a little bit about yourself, you know, how you got into this type of lifestyle, maybe a little bit about like your childhood, what you ate back then versus how you're eating now and how you're living now. Yeah, that's good questions to think back because, uh, yeah, I had a longer journey kind of getting to uh, raw food um, so yeah, I, but I also have an interesting life story why I know the, all the languages. Um, so I'm actually Belarusian Jewish background. So my, my parents, back then it was all the Soviets, so it was all Russian, Eastern Europe was all, uh, many countries were like part of Russia, so Belarus is one of them. It's near Poland, Ukraine, and that area over there. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I was born there, but I don't remember it because my entire family moved to Israel. So I was about a year old when I moved there. So growing up in Israel, I was also kind of confused about my nationality, like am I Israeli or Russian? Because at home we speak Russian. And so, yeah, growing up, I was having uh, like what my mom cooked was mostly these uh, um, uh, Russian dishes. And I didn't really eat so much out because I was still a kid, so I didn't go out much. So I was mostly eating my mom's cooking and she's a kind of um, doctor. She was always into medicine and also into like holistic and plants and alternative medicine. So she was making whole plant foods for the most part. I do remember, yeah, we had things, uh, you know, usual things like uh, bread and uh, and uh, what else, meat, but it was pretty rare and, you know, dairy and things like that. But the quality of food in Israel, I think was pretty high. And then uh, my parents didn't like the whole war situation and, and they moved to Canada. So in, uh, I was about 12 years old at that point. So I was a kid, I was excited to learn English. So that's why I speak Russian and Hebrew and English. And then now I'm learning Spanish. So I got four languages. <laughs> <laughs> and in Canada, that's amazing. My lifestyle was different, yeah. It was, well, if you um, had a mother like that, you know, feeding you yeah. living foods, you know, no wonder you were as sharp as a whip, <laughs> you know, this is <laughs> such electricity, right, for the nervous system. That is so cool. I didn't know that about your mom. That's awesome. Yeah, so she, Thank you for sharing. She wasn't a uh, vegetarian or anything for a while, I guess. We were, yeah, we were kind of eating mixed food. And I, I remember feeling the quality of food difference in Canada was definitely lower and um, I did try things like fast food and McDonald's and sometimes I even felt like, um, well, just thinking back, I remember a time where I uh, begged my parents to go to McDonald's, but it was only like once or twice or a few times that they kind of said, okay. And then so ever since then, I mostly ate like primarily my mom's food, but there was definitely some processed food. I remember, you know, cereals, milk, things like that, but then it took some time um, and I remember the dairy was not doing good with me when I was a kid growing up. Like uh, every morning I had the dairy in Israel, it was okay as a kid, but then it was really bad, uh, like a lot of, you know, gas and it was not good on my digestion. So I luckily stopped with that. Uh, and then, yeah, slowly, I don't know. Yeah, I had also the phase, you know, as a teenager, I was eating more like junk food and pizzas and things like that, but still primarily, I guess it was my mom's food, but Really what changed is when I, you know, started working, I was lucky enough. Now everybody's learning about working from home, but I was lucky enough to get the working from home because I just didn't like to commute. And so I was still eating my mom's cooking primarily. And then once I decided, well, I can actually travel and work. So I actually went traveling. This was back, you know, the digital nomad boom. So I was a computer programmer <laughs> traveling. And uh, and pretty soon after I started traveling, I learned about fruits and like I was drawn to nature. And my brother told me, check out Dr. Moore's and all the 
like Ted Carr, these people I looked at and it just made sense. I was like, yeah, fruit and I can travel and I can be healthy all the time. Any country, I'm not going to be worried. I can eat fruits all across the world, everywhere. So that was how I became like a fruitarian traveler. That's why I called myself Fruit Adventure. Like I was just traveling. Yes, uh, I love the years. name. I love that. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> That's perfect. And after some years of traveling, I was more drawn to fruit loving people because yeah, I was traveling, I was seeing people around and uh, it was, yeah, it was pretty fun, but uh, telling them about fruit lifestyle and sometimes they're interested. Sometimes I even met fruitarians, but it was like, uh, yeah, I just wanted to be more, more like-minded people. So I started going to festival. I went to the Canada Fruit Festival and then I went to the Woodstock Fruit. Well, actually that was later. So after the Canada Fruit Festival, I found here Fruit Haven. And then I wanted to keep traveling. So I went back to Canada and I went to the Woodstock Fruit Festival and then I came back. And yeah, I've been here ever since basically. That is so cool. You said your brother introduced you to like more of a fruitarian way of eating. Is this yeah. like an older brother or? Yeah, he's older. I have one older brother and that's it. And then after he did that, actually interesting. So I was influenced very quickly. I, was, I just said, yeah, it makes sense. Let's do it eat fruit and he he got into it as well so he's yeah he was unsure at first he said well let's find out what do you think is this good and he was into it but he he took some time to get into it and then my mom she already stopped with the gluten because she had problems with gluten so even like five years before that and then after well i was like yeah let's just eat fruits and she she decided to be vegetarian so that it, or actually vegan i guess at that point she went vegan with no gluten and then uh, my dad was slowly, he was more like she prepares the food for him. So it'll be primarily that. But if he asked for something, um, then she might do it. And then he dropped the dairy slowly. He took some years. And I think now they're both full plant vegan as well. So we got my whole family on it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's amazing. I'm just curious. How many siblings do you have? Yeah, just the one older brother. The one older brother. It's so wonderful to have an older sibling because they often will influence us in a positive way. Um, they could also influence us in other ways that are not so positive. But I know yeah. with my older sister, like she had, she was into raw food. She was into yoga. She was into all of this way before me. And thank God she got me into yoga because this is where I believe when your body's more flexible, like I was going to ask you if your family's into yoga, because if your body's more flexible than your mind is more flexible like you're more open-minded are yeah, you guys into so. any like movement or meditation. yeah ah, yeah this makes a lot um, of she's sense doing for goals. She's doing, yeah i think she does do basic yoga my mom is definitely the more open into these kinds of things my dad is slowly getting into this stuff and yeah they just for now they just kind of walk around like they do certain i don't know walking and that's their exercise mm. but uh, yeah i like yoga i was traveling when i was going like different i was hiking i was doing yoga i was in india i was in thailand i was in many places and yeah it was great oh my god you've been all around i feel like we're gonna definitely do this again if you're open to it because honestly like an hour yeah, is not fun. gonna be enough <laughs> yes this would be good maybe we go till 4 p.m eastern standard time what time are you guys on over in ecuador uh i think it's it's similar, but we don't have the the time saving or whatever. So right now we're at 2 p.m. So in the winter time, okay. we have the same time. Oh, my God, that's so cool. We could talk on WhatsApp and stuff then because some of my friends and my sister actually are in Australia. So it's really difficult to connect with them because they're like a whole day difference. You know, there's only a small segment of time that I could speak with them. Also, our dear uh, friend and regenerative detox specialist, Kuba, he is living in right. Spain and I know he really wanted to make this interview, so I'll see if he does jump on. Kuba, if you're here with us, let us know. Uh, but yeah, it's often difficult for us to connect, but we really love to have like really nice chats because, you know, like it's not so common to, like you were saying earlier, to have friends that are into the same thing that you're into, especially since yeah, exactly. I think there's like, you, you know, in terms of detox people and raw fruitarian people, I think like, 
there's one percent <laughs> like of us out there so it's yeah, not probably. always so easy but we are like lighthouses all over that's the world now so i'm so happy you're shining your light <laughs> exactly it's funny because there was answer, a conversation uh, on yes, facebook just sent us quickly uh yes ecuador that's oh, where yes, we're at please. it's if you want to check it out it's in uh our website fruithaven.org <laughs> yes, fruithaven.org, <laughs> Jessica. And so she's actually from in. Ecuador too. Oh, so she's really? from okay. there. Okay. Yeah. And then I also have some friends and slash clients that are also from Ecuador who I invited to join us on this. Maybe they catch the recording if they're not here with us live. But Diana and Ligia, they're such beautiful sisters that are from Ecuador. And they've given me the honor and opportunity to help like their whole family with detox. Like I've been helping, you know, one, one of the um, young girls, she was like four years old. I did her iris analysis and oh, cool. her mom, Diana, is like feeding them like so much fruit and getting it from agro trading here in Toronto. So Jessica is, um, I believe, the uh, founder or, or owner of uh, agro trading. So she's with us here today. So thank you, Jessica, for being with us. And Boris, thank you for telling us a little bit about your upbringing and, you know, how you got into raw foods. Um, I wanted to know like a little bit more about your experience, maybe your journey with detoxification and raw foods, if you'd like to speak about that. Yeah. Yeah. So basically where I pick up that is like I started the traveling and then I went uh, basically when I got into traveling, I was more, yeah, I wasn't sure I wanted to try the local foods and, but I was still eating like a lot of fruits and, and then uh, my brother was in Thailand and he said, come over and uh, travel there. And uh, yeah, basically I wasn't sure about it. So I started looking up all the videos at that time. It was Ted Carr and eating a lot of fruit and uh, I just increased my fruits. So I don't remember having like a strong detox, but um, uh, later about maybe a year and a half later, I had some detox symptoms and I made like a blog post detailing it, but I'll go briefly. So it was some sort of a, I'm, I'm still, yeah, I have no idea what kind of infection or what it was, but basically nothing helped with it. And I was eating primarily fruits at that point over a year, year and a half, it was on my leg. And um, so I decided to try the master fast system because uh, nothing else really worked. And uh, yeah, you heard of that. So, and uh, Gino yeah, and Rana so are like dear, dear brother, uh, dear brother and dear sister in my life. Yeah, I really was, love them. The founders of the master fast. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're great. They asked me actually to go on live at some point, but I didn't do that yet. Maybe okay. you, did you go on any? Yeah, you can look up Jeanette Anakini, my full name on oh, cool. YouTube. And the first video that pops up is just Gino interviewing me about, um, I think it was three years ago when I did my 40, just finished my 40 day Concord grape juice fast with them. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty powerful stuff. Yeah, at first it was kind of learning what is it, why I was not sure like, oh, why is it cooked? And so learning all these things is very interesting. And so yeah, just jumped on it, got all the ingredients and uh, the amount of healing. And yeah, I would say that was, the transition point it's like before and after master fast basically i did like in total 30 days but after that it's it's pretty miraculous like the uh the changes are just i can be on fruit around people even some people that come here and they transition they might be cooking and different things like some things i'm okay with whole plants but other things like i wouldn't even go anywhere near you know things like rice or bread or well that's not really mm, allowed here amazing but people might have to you know put up with these things and so yeah that's that's why people come here they want to go away from these sort of environment like we have i can do a little tour at some point maybe maybe in a, that'd be another... amazing <laughs> yeah yeah if you want to do the tour whenever you're ready i mean show us around okay. this is a this is a magical place maybe you tell us a little bit too um i hope i'm not interrupting but like when you're doing the tour you tell us a little bit about how like you know our members can come out and do like a raw oh, yeah. you know lifestyle with you maybe learn about permaculture or whatever it is that you guys are offering there at fruit haven yeah. eco village i'd love to learn more yeah the main thing we have kind of uh main two options are renting rooms and buying land so people come for Ooh. that and in the future we want to be able to offer more of these like we already do permaculture so you, you're welcome to come with us and learn about it and we'll do like workshops if you're interested 
And then uh, we don't have like a structured course yet, but we do have lots of materials. I can see the library here. We have lots of different interesting books mm. from detox to permaculture to uh, spirituality to, you know, what have you, even financial Basically stuff everything that I love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's amazing. We have, of course, Oh, this, the Miracle Source <laughs> Quest. What is it again? How does he call it? Yeah. It's a long name. Yeah. yeah the, the Source Quest miracle. miracle Source Book. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Dr. Robert <laughs> Morse, one of our mentors and beautiful is it, healer, is living it reversed legend. on the camera? I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah it's backwards. It's it hard to see. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Show us the yeah. kids the <laughs> land. I need to see what's yeah, going so on I'll do, over there. I'll flip the camera. Okay. And this is how the kitchen wow. looks. So we got the library here to the right and some medical. We have different tinctures and herbs if anyone needs those. And then I'll pan over here. We have a fruit shelf where we store bananas to keep them safe from critters and bugs and such. So that's, that's our fresh beautiful. bananas, all organic, 100%. It's different kinds, yeah. And so many kitchen, different kinds, not have... like just the Cavendish that we have here, guys. Like there's so exactly. many. Boris yeah. can tell you all the different varieties. I'm sure you could share. Like not today, but like there's a whole a dozen, list yeah. of them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's that? Sorry. Say that again. So we have probably close to a dozen varieties, maybe something like that. Oh my God, yum! And speaking so about herbal tinctures too, important. like. Just to go backwards for a second, because you mentioned you have some herbal tinctures there. Yeah. Like last week with the super moon, I don't know if you felt it, but thank goodness this is the last super moon for a while, guys. And Mercury just ended the retrograde. So mm -hmm. I'm feeling a lot lighter this week. But last week, I so needed all my herbal tinctures just because of the emotions, you know. I went on a, a live with Gino, Master Gino from the Master Fast system, and I said, I'm emotional today. I just need your company. I love that you're showing us as I. I chat with you and uh he goes oh if yeah. you're emotional you know the herbs are very helpful for that have you had much experience with emotions and using herbal tinctures uh yeah yeah i think well basically it's just mostly using them in the master fast and he kind of says uh yeah if you're not doing fasting they're not necessary but but yeah i could definitely mm -hmm. see if you're feeling something help you like once in a while not because they are powerful, but mm. yeah, something to keep. But yeah, we have some herb, local herbs. Uh, we don't have as much of a knowledge on them, but we have things like lemongrass and ginger, turmeric, those kinds of things. Oh, and the turmeric grow grows like crazy there, right? Yeah, yeah, it just takes off. It's yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm getting turmeric um, from yeah. agro and it's like the freshest. They bring it, like I say, overnight from uh, Ecuador. And it's like, Oh my God, the oh, freshest cool. turmeric I've ever had. Wow, this is the what's lemon all this? Grass. Ooh, this is so lemongrass, nice. really fragrant, delicious. Well, I mean, it's not really for eating, but maybe a tea or this is the katuk. I don't know if you might remember how it looks. Yes. Oh my God, it it's looks so little, delicious because I know, I know it tastes like peanut butter and it's I really want it right tasty. now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will check the comments too if I'll you guys are watching. I'm spitting out my juice. So this I'm going to check the comments as we people chat. Get... Oh, yeah, let's see. Oh, yeah, okay. Someone oh, my loves God. Lemon yes, grass. coconuts. And, um... Girl, she knows it. Lemongrass is so <laughs> good in soup. I really love it in, in, like, you know, like a Thai soup, coconut. Um, Kind of like a sweet potato. I mean, I know we're talking with a raw vegan here, but do you ever just have like a little like cooked veggies at times, Boris? Or yes, yeah, yeah, I'm open just a for little bit here and there. Or... Kind of foods, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not strict on on it, uh, but generally, I'm probably I don't know between eighty and whatever percentage of <laughs> raw. But here's our vegetable garden. We have Tim working in there. <laughs> So we're trying to, it's harder in the tropics because we have a lot of rain here, but we have also a lot of compost from all the fruit scraps and stuff so we can have high quality vegetables and uh, yeah, I don't know what else I could show. I guess we got little- How many rooms plants. do you guys have? Here's a big one. Over there, how many rooms? Oh yeah, that's like, a how good many point. I can, can have a look at some rooms. 
Yeah, uh, basically, show us some let's see. We have various options. I'll show one of the one of the basic rooms here near the kitchen. So th this is kind of a a little room, but we have uh, other cabins. Generally, people want to be separated further from the communal area. Mm. So this is kind of we have the mosquito net. Bring that. Nice. It's important in those countries. I know this is very important. Mosquito do you ever just net, sleep under the Boris? Do you ever just sleep under like the sky, like with nothing, like you're not even in a room, like <laughs> you're just? I don't know. Do you, do you ever do that? Or? I have done that. I've done that in places uh, much drier, like when I traveled in Mexico and in uh, India mm. and places like that. But here, I don't know, mm. I guess I haven't, I think it, it's definitely possible, but here it's a more rainy kind of place. So you'll probably end up getting rained mm -hmm. on eventually, but, <laughs> oh, but true, I do sleep in an open. If you see some of my videos or my cabin I'm showing, it's got no walls at this time. I'm not, I'm probably not gonna put walls either. I'm, I like it like just open, yes. open the air. Yes, I've seen this before. I don't know if you know who Eric Rivkin is. Boris, do you know Eric? Oh, yeah, I've heard of, yeah. So, so he I've like uh, owns the top of like a, a shorter mountain in Costa Rica so he can have all his fruit trees because obviously like if it's a uh, tall yeah. mountain, the altitude you can't grow. Um, but so he actually has like a cabin that has no walls and it's for like his guests to come and stay. And I always just like really think about this. Like oh, nice. I just dream yeah. about sleeping under the stars, guys. Like it is the most beautiful feeling. I didn't even care in Costa Rica that I was getting eaten while I was sleeping by mosquitoes. Just to have like the open sky above me was absolute heaven. So, but I do have to admit that I'm <clears throat> not quite so down to earth as you Boris and that I really need people like you around me to encourage me to kind of let go of some of my comforts it's like if you've there, seen my mattress example. what <laughs> connect with the earth by walking barefoot <laughs> that one I really love I was already earthing today like just in the grass but see I'm like such a princess like oh I'll go barefoot when it's grass it but is if it's mud with I the won't earth. <laughs> <laughs> so cute <laughs> oh we have some okay, so we African got... basil here yep. many herbs but uh yeah in terms of the rooms I guess mm. I couldn't get too far from here and um what else oh yeah oh let me get back to I have some notes to see where we're at yeah if you have other questions I'll answer I do I have more questions okay very cool i really appreciate the tour i'm like really looking forward to coming there one day uh diana was saying maybe um in november she comes to ecuador so i will connect whoever i can because i think this is going to be of great benefit to all beings hey there's cat hi cat <laughs> little sleepy beauty <laughs> sleeping beauty <laughs> this is like the ecuadorian version of my boyfriend's cat because my boyfriend has the same cat but like yours is like i don't know a little bit like more i think more fit you know because he lives in the jungle and probably a little bit happier than <laughs> our cat archie but we love archie and, and they could be brothers i think so let's see um, if anybody's joining us, just let us know if you have any questions for Boris. He's he's so well educated in raw foods, detoxification and herbal medicine, as well as permaculture and living a more sustainable life. He's from Toronto, Canada, but he now resides in Ecuador. How cool is that? I'm going to continue with some questions. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. We'd be happy to answer them. And if you're catching the recording, you can also ask questions because Boris and I will just like follow up, you know, later on, we can just check back, you know. So yeah, we'll let do us another know. Q and A and oh, that'd be so lovely. We can make you like a regular guest if you want. The raw reset. <laughs> yeah. So fun to have you. Yeah. Why not? So tell us a bit about the Fruit Haven Eco Village and how it got started, and a little bit more about how it operates, if you don't mind. Oh yeah, let me pull up my notes here. Hmm. Let me see. There is something. 
I gotta do because I think our power went out, so I gotta turn the generator back on. Okay, <laughs> but, uh, take your time. All good. In the meantime. The place looks beautiful. Yes, and there's, there's all our comments are so supportive and loving. Thank you, beautiful ones, for leaving comments. It makes me really excited that you're as excited about fruit as Boris and I are. And um, yeah, and that you're open to, you know, adopting a little bit more of a raw lifestyle, more living foods. And probably since you're here, you're interested in living a bit more sustainable. Um, you know, maybe reducing some waste. Like I, I had some people ask me, oh, well, if you're getting your fruit shipped overnight, like how sustainable is that, you know? But then I, I talked to them, I said, look, like we're also cutting out like that middleman, like we're reducing packaging. There's, you know, you really have to look at all um, aspects of things, you know, there's really a lot to consider. So yeah, let us know guys, if you have any questions or comments. You are so welcome here. Boris just corrects his um, situation with the internet because, of course, he's in the middle of the jungle and he has to make sure he has backup power and things for doing lives. It's really cool that it worked out because last week we tried to go live and it just didn't work out, right? So how is your situation yeah, now, Boris, problems. with the internet? Mm -hmm. Well, we've had power. It's very funny. It happens exactly when uh, we're trying to do these. Okay. This is always how life is, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe I'll <laughs> take a pause and then uh, Feel I'll free. enter the workshop. Maybe I'll show you guys in case anyone's interested. So we do stuff with, you know, workshop and construction, but I'll get into that in a moment. Yes. Is there a way to pause so my cool. thing so it doesn't... Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so what I could do is I could end it and then you just request to join again when you're ready. Or no, I could, yeah, I could even leave the Okay, okay, so he's left. <laughs> All I heard was leave that he was gone. <laughs> That's so much fun. I'm just so happy today. Like Boris just makes me feel so happy because it's like, like, wow, like, you know, I'm in the place now with my journey that I've attracted one who could even like inspire me to go deeper. You know, I really don't think him and I would be connecting like this if I wasn't in such a great place with my detoxification journey. I will tell you a little story before Boris jumps back on. And if you guys have any questions about, you know, living more sustainably, maybe like moving from like a big city over to like Ecuador and how that is, like any questions you have for Boris, please let us know. Um, raw foods, detoxification, anything like that, just pop it in the comments. But in the meantime, I'll tell you what's been kind of going on with me. And I'm really just feeling so good about where I'm at now. But I will tell you that over the last year, I really was getting experimental with my diet and uh, with certain like substances like alcohol. I was like, oh, it's okay to just have like a glass of wine with dinner. And you know, for me, if, if you have to have it every night, that's an issue because then it has like some kind of power over you. So I would just like, you know, when I saw my boyfriend, I'd have like a glass of wine with dinner with him, or we'd go to a park and have a beer. And I have to say like, this did not serve me and it took me like a year to really realize it because I guess I was like really hydrating with the raw foods. I was having lots of cucumber, lots of fruits, berries, melons, lots of really high water content foods. So if I had like a beer or a glass of wine, I didn't really feel like the negative effects so much. Um, but then again, I do remember you know, you have one and then you're feeling really good. So then you have two. And then the next day, I definitely felt the dehydration. I felt pain come back into my body because I come from previous uh, injury, a C-spine injury. And I had like really chronic pain that I lived with for eight months. And that's how I got into the raw food detox lifestyle. Um, that's when I delved in much deeper, you know, with my journey. But I have to say, like, it just happened where you know, everything just opened back up in Toronto. And my boyfriend was invited to go to his friend's bar. So his friend owns a bar, okay? And 
all of his friends were, were there. I go with him and I had my orange juice and my salad that I packed with me because this is how you kind of need to be guys. When you're really taking responsibility for your health, you really have to prepare meals and you have to pack what you need. And otherwise, you know, you're just out and you don't know, like, I guess a lot of places in Toronto are offering really healthy stuff now. Like there's freshie, you could get smoothies, you know, there's you could get salads um, at a lot of places there's this restaurant called fresh they're really good just let me know if um oh boris is ready thank you let me know if you need to know about fresh rest restaurants but anyways to end this story we went to this restaurant and i noticed how uncomfortable i was with not drinking and how that's the issue the peer pressure so anyways, we could talk more Pero about tengo, this, si preguntas, <laughs> tengo, yeah. but we have okay. Boris back and he's speaking some Spanish. Some local people are asking me some questions. So. Hola, como estas? <laughs> Hi. Oh, look how cute. Canada, from... Sending love to Canada. <laughs> mwah, mwah. Canada. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute. Aw. <laughs> what a beautiful yeah, community you have there, Boris. This is just <laughs> local fine. people. They don't have they Being don't so have friendly. I love it. The nearby city, that's where they're from. <laughs> okay. It's about an hour, to... well, 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope that they would uh, get on with the program. <laughs> We have one Ecuadorian <laughs> that lives in, uh, she was here first and then another place. We have a Colombian, we have uh, actually now Chilean from Chile. So we have mm. some local South American people, but primarily European and North American, like American, Canada, many people visiting us. Samar was here, you know Samar, right? Oh my God, my dear <laughs> sister Samar, how is she? Yeah, she's good. I think she's traveling. Not too sure. Maybe the coast or something. She's going around different places. I have to catch up with this Ecuador. one. She's such a good yeah. one. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So you were going to tell us a little bit more about Fruit Haven Eco Village, how, maybe how it got started, how it operates. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, let's go into a brief history. So there's the main characters here are Peter and Jason. So if anyone wants to see them, they have um, also their own, you know, YouTube channels and Telegram, different things like that, Facebook. So, oh, for our members, would you uh, be able to tell Jason the YouTube? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, maybe I'll post the links on the comments. Or Let's something do that. Like that. Um, yeah, that'd be good. But basically, Thank you. it's Jason. Yeah, I would have to look it up. Peter Sear. Okay. C-S-E-R-E. -E, that's his last name. And so it goes back to uh, like 2014 or 15 when they started a community called Terra Frutis. And you can see now it's terrafrutis.com. Oh, yes, uh, yes. They, they started uh, back then and uh, it was bought by one person and that funded it. His name is Jay. Uh, he didn't really live there as far as I know. He just purchased the place and he paid for um, for things to happen there. So they built a beautiful community center. You could see, I'm sure they have videos and on YouTube as well. And then they have the um, uh, Amazon Fruit Festival, which they did. So that's another festival that I attended, but that was already after I came here. And... Um, mm. Let's see. So after that, so basically Jason and Peter, and there were some other people, which uh, I'm not too sure exactly of all the details of who it is, but uh, <laughs> that's okay. Things so the generator <clears throat> doesn't get too heavy or overloaded. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, it's very unusual. Actually, we're here. We're connected to the grid, uh, but at some other people, uh, personal law. Most of them are connecting with uh, solar panels. They have batteries, and so they're, mm. they're off the grid. Um, I see. Oh, okay, interesting. So, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, we're trying to be kind of off-grid. A lot of the ideas of people here, like, do they want to own land? And so 
Peter uh, decided he wanted to own his own land, but Jay said, well, he wants to keep that community uh, just communal, which is great. So we have Terra Frutis. Hmm. And then Peter found some other group uh, of people that invested in what is now Fruit Haven One, which is where I'm hmm. at today. Um, it wasn't as, as pretty or anything. It was like uh, the house was falling apart. I don't know, they, you know, <laughs> just stories because I came <laughs> later. So we fixed things up. Um, so that was uh, 2016. So a year, about a year and a half later, he purchased that with a group of people and they decided to have a group land buy, something very unique where it's a group of people that own the land together and then the community area is communal where I'm at today now and then there's personal private lots which are further up the hill and, and they're free to do whatever they want with their personal lots and the community area operates personal independently okay. so we have you know people <clears throat> Yeah, so those personal lots people can develop with their own money, whereas the community area, it's all uh, together with the community, together with the owners, together whoever wants to contribute. There's a lot of donations that we get. Uh, and then now we have little micro businesses, so we actually sell various things. So, for example, some local people in this area, there's no gasoline for their boats and motorbikes and things like that. So we ended up just needing it for ourselves. but. We saw that people said, hey, you have gasoline. So we started selling it. Uh, we have other nice. stuff as well, like the plants. We sell them. Sometimes we give it for free, the, you know, but we might sell some things. It depends on, on how, mm, how it goes, mm. if we have too much of something. And Beautiful. what else do we do? Yeah, we have different Boris, things. There, yeah. there may be a little delay, um, but I just have a question. <clears throat> so are you saying that somebody like me could just buy a plot of land exactly <laughs> where you are and start planting yes. like coconut trees like jackfruit durian like now so exactly. that in 10 yeah. years they're fully free so and then you guys would take care of the trees or how does that yes. work like if i'm yeah, exactly. here you send over the money what? You what you, you maintain it now the coconut <laughs> homes they do okay here it's not ideal for coconuts but yeah we'll we'll give you suggestions like yeah jackfruit does great wow. durian does it depends on the elevation too so if you buy a lot that's on a higher we will tell you what's better you know some things are better we'll also have permaculture designs for your land so we'll look at the slopes <laughs> and work with the contour lines and yeah you know, we'll also oh there's God. designs of houses you can see on our website under uh the group land buys page where there's more details about what's available what the processes are so and then you'll oh, thank see you the, so uh, much price ranges yeah fruithaveneco.village.com or what's the website for there our is members that one so that, so that one we changed recently because i like shorter domains so i bought the or well actually we collectively got the fruit haven fruithaven.org, a short one. Okay, fruithaven.org. Okay, perfect. That's great for our members so that they can learn a bit more, you know, after this interview. And you guys can expect me to have Boris on again and we can learn more about this beautiful, inspiring human <laughs> and what he's doing to okay. help everybody, you know, to come over into a bit more of a raw living food diet, you know, alkaline lifestyle with, you know, sustainability, being at the forefront of the uh, motivation and health of yeah, course pretty, yeah because i think that there's a connection a lot of people they want to go raw vegan and it's it's great but the more i did it in city environments there it just didn't feel as good as being in nature and so here it's just the closer you could get where we can never get like 100 percent back and living on on top of trees like monkeys but uh, <laughs> yeah maybe there's three houses or something we can build but yeah, so oh, we'll yes. do it step by yes. step and we get back to, back to that. Thank and you so much. And... This, this is such an incredible opportunity for our members. I actually was doing some coaching as an iridologist and a regenerative detox coach here in Toronto for three years. And one of my clients, she had stomach cancer 
And she kept calling me when I was in Costa Rica. I was only there for two months, just seeing if I could live. Like, you know, I thought I was a lot more down to earth than I actually am. Uh, so I tried it out. I learned a lot about myself. But yeah, her name was Margarita. And uh, she was just such a good one. But she just really needed a community. You know, she she really was finding it difficult living in downtown Toronto to be, you know, really high raw fruitarian. And that's what the protocol is for cancer is it's just fruits. And if you need some green juice, green juice is okay um, for grounding and things. But she was calling me all the time when I was in Costa Rica being like, Jin, when are we going to start like our own community? And then boom, like, you know, unfortunately, she passed away. I think really her soul was looking for a healthier body, you know, um, but she's with me every day. And, and I got some clear messages from her in, in the astral uh, body, you know, that she's doing really well, wherever she is. And uh, yeah, but it's like, then all of a sudden you came into my life for us. It was like, yes, um, I lost a dear one, but then I gained another dear one who can actually open this opportunity. And Margarita left with me such a powerful message that we really have to make this available for people. People are not well. And, you know, like not to go too heavy, um, but, you know, like Gino always says from the Master Fast system, like you could die any day. You know, like he warns you when you join the Master Fast uh, group that if you read the notice, he's like, yeah, fasting can kill you. <laughs> like, like not kill you, but like you could die when fasting. Like just because, and he says it every paragraph, he repeats it. You could die when you're fasting. Like he's disclosing this because you could die oh. anytime. And, a, and fasting isn't going to really be the worst thing. Like it's not going to. I remember I him saying that there's not many people that die fasting. They die eating. Most people die this when is they're eating. I, <laughs> thank they're you. Eating you just said it better than I could. That, yeah. <laughs> get each other you know Boris this is so cool okay yeah. so I pulled up the website and it's okay, really nice. really yeah. beautiful so yeah, people can come here to science. learn some more do you so want to tell us a... sorry you go first yeah. you go first we have the the few opportunities basically renting a room for example if you want to check it out and see how it is if you're willing most people they're not so fit but some some might want to actually work like when i came i wanted to work and so i committed to working 20 hours a week uh which is actually wow, not that much but it's cool. yeah you're flexible will be okay with like 15 hours if you're starting out and then uh yeah we're flexible to you know if you just want to see the place so that's why we have just mm. the rental options and you'll see all different rental options that we have right now so there's Fruit Haven 1, okay. and in 2017, a year later, Fruit Haven 2 was purchased. So we have a couple cabins in the community area. Fruit Haven 3 was purchased the year after that, 2018. And then there is a beautiful cabin there. That, that one's further away. That one is like a 30, 40, probably 40 minute hike for most people. We have quads and, and motorbikes. And now we have a Jeep and a dump truck that also can bring stuff up there like fruits and whatever else. And a lot of, so oh each God, one of these so is cool. independent and they <clears throat> have different owners. So each one is owned by, depends on the property between one of them. For example, this Fruit Haven one is, I think about six or seven or something like that owners. Then most of them have around 10 owners, basically 10, 11 owners. And now we bought Fruit Haven four, which I actually bought into as well. So I'm planning to build some more stuff over there. And yeah, there's a few people that Yay. are interested also from Canada recently and they want to build houses and cabins and want to make like a retreat center and we have so many ideas and things like there's already um let me count it's hard to even count but probably around 10 uh personal houses that are built on on their lots different lots now so they're different designs there's like uh, yeah so you could see what we have available and if you want to create your own as well you're welcome most people will customize it and make their own like oh i want this kind of bathroom or that kind of house and that kind of uh, room or whatever and it's different that building is here so than cool temperate climate yeah <laughs> what a beautiful opportunity yeah. yeah what is that sorry oh we can also help with the planting projects so most people mm. that might not know about permaculture some of them like me and some other people that 
are into that, but then other people, we have probably a mix of both, like half of the people that want to do their own, but they'll still get some help with the uh, workers. And then the other half of the people, they might uh, work on, you know, on just having other people do it or, or what did I say? I don't know now. I'm by more <laughs> that's okay that's okay i know you've got lots going on uh, no i just really some appreciate your time today own. some Thank people you. will have us take care of it that's basically um, the point is and mm. we can do both so yeah we can have we'll tell you what our suggestions what timings when do you want to do certain kinds of planting and how often to maintain what kind of plant spacing you know how much distance and uh, yeah all that kind of stuff and what kind of amendments for the soil so in this tropical climate, it's really good. It works. Uh, so you do really have Canadians. Well, uh, any... You do have some yeah, Canadians um, moving there. Okay. Like, are they going to live there? Do you think, or? Uh, let me think about Canadians. Uh, yes, actually, there's a couple from Quebec that is interested in. Uh, well, actually, no, they're already purchased the the land. And they've been sending uh, money to, you know, update the cabin. That is the land that had like a very basic structure. And now they've built a nicer one. Uh, or actually they've kind oh of uh, upgraded That's... that one and maintained the fruit trees. And so, yeah, they're interested in coming. I think they have some pets and stuff. So they wanted to make sure it's all caged in so they can't uh, escape or something. <laughs> I don't know. You know, like the house. There couldn't not... be a better time to live like this, you know, like really like yeah. growing your own food. Like what better time is there than now? You know, this is so, so cool. Yeah, being okay. independent and far away from like the big cities and the governments like here, it seems like the government, sometimes they're OK, like they're flexible for example anyone can still fly into ecuador it's pretty easy going like with a negative pcr test in the last 72 hours whereas in some other countries they might be more strict and they're not accepting like i know in canada they're a bit more strict like my brother he wanted to go back to canada and he said yeah, it was a lot of hassle trying to get through all the different checkpoints and whatever else and now you have to stay in a hotel and quarantine and you have to pay out of pocket. And that apparently is John Tory. I don't really follow politics because it just like makes me like feel, I don't know, down. Like, I don't know, there's so much corruption, you know, but this is what I'm hearing is a little bit difficult now for Canadians. So hopefully things change. I think we just be patient. Um, we're coming to the end of our time and I had a bunch more questions. So it's okay because you've generously offered to do another live like this so see yeah, how you feel yeah, in the next week we can keep more and that way maybe we schedule more people will jump on and see it at the same time yes. yeah yeah and then they'll have questions and it'll really get down to like what people really need help with you know because when we get that engagement that's where really the magic happens um i mean there was a lot of magic here just with me and you and the ladies from agro just channeling in whatever was supposed to come through for this call but i guess the last thing i would like you to speak about just before we wrap up because this is going to be really helpful for our members is uh just this upcoming fruit festival that uh, I heard yeah. about. Yeah, they've been talking about it. They they haven't confirmed 100% this year. The last one was pretty successful considering all the pandemic stuff we had. I can't remember exactly, but maybe around 20 people. The one before that, it was like 40 people. So we kind of went a little down, but considering the pandemic stuff and whatever else. Uh, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, this one, they don't know exactly yet. They're probably every year it's uh, in January because that's a really good time for both the climate, like it's not too rainy and also the fruit seasons, the local fruits are in season. There's a lot of mangoes and a lot of other special, you know, soursops oh and whatever. Interesting Mango yeah, season. So basically, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of cool local varieties that they're similar, I guess, somewhat to the Canadian ones that you might be getting like from Mexico, but the ones local here. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's mm -hmm. uh, so you check out. I can also put the link for that. It's the Amazon fruit festival dot com. That's the link. Is that a mango? Nice one. This is what you were just speaking about. They're coming from Mexico, I think. Oh, wait, uh, is yes. this? No, this is the Cuban one. This is the Cuban one. Yes, from from agro trading. It smells so good, guys. 
but imagine you're in Ecuador and they're just like falling off the tree. So what is the name of the fruit festival? Do they have a name? Yep, yeah, it's called the Amazon Fruit Festival. I'll post the link to cool. it in the chat now. Works. That would be great. Oh my God, that's so fun. So that's January. Okay, I see the link, amazonfruitfestival.com. Okay, cool. so, so if you guys are interested in being around an abundance of fruit, beautiful humans who are just high vibing like Boris here, you know, super happy, super <laughs> positive people because the fruit really brings on this like peaceful mindset, you know, as we get rid of some of these parasites and some of these heavier energies, these denser energies, denser oh, chemistry, right? That, yeah. We feel really that good. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Terra Frutis, which is uh, a beautiful big, you know, yoga hall, which has lots of daily activities. And then uh, I think usually what they do is there's a, three day coconut water fast before is an optional add on. So if you want to do mm. that, if not, you could just come to the actual festival and then there'll be okay. lots of uh, fruits during the day. And then from about <sighs> lunch to the dinner, then there's like salad options if you want those. And then uh, they also have some raw gourmet things. So some dehydrated things, uh, fermented cheese and fermented like sauerkraut Yum. and different things like that. Oh my God. Yeah. That's so good oh my Not god so with the three day and, yeah. with the three day yep. coconut water fast is that all prepared for you yeah so you like can the, the either water? open your own coconut if you wanted or you could drink the water uh that's like we put it into glass uh, containers and there's yes, uh please. this time we also had some <laughs> other juices as optional like uh, some lemon water or lemon juice and there was even I think things like celery and orange and watermelon, different oh. things. Uh, but it's usually it's focused, so I think, on coconut water. But they might do optionally like a just a juice fast where you could drink whatever juice you wanted. And yeah, people say that's some great healing. They consider, I don't know if they do mm. enemas. I don't think they did it this year, but they might do it for the next one. I think that would be a good thing because I for sure yes. master fast. I healed a lot to that. Yeah, fasting is amazing. And coconut water, you're not even really fasting. This is like the most complete food from my understanding. Like they can actually replace yeah. like blood plasma, like plasma with coconut water. Yes, okay. yes. Oh my yeah. God, who knows? Maybe I'll come out in January. Maybe we bring Cuba and candy and yeah. any awesome. of our members. This yeah. would be so fun. <laughs> I really am awesome. so grateful yeah. for you, Boris. Thank you for your time today. And thank you to all our beautiful thank members you. who joined in and contributed to the discussion. If you are just catching the recording, we go live again, maybe hopefully next week if Boris is available. We keep you yeah. posted. And then you guys can help engage in the conversation and you know, you know, bring in whatever is supposed to be brought up for everybody's benefit. So thank you, thank Boris, you. for your Sounds time. Great yeah <laughs> is there any last yeah. words any final words before we say goodbye uh, yeah just keep it fruity and uh, enjoy your weekend <laughs> and have a good time don't take life too seriously just enjoy the moment <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for the words of wisdom, sending you so much love and all of the team out there at Fruit Haven Eco Village. We just love you so much and are so grateful for what you're doing. So can't wait to see you again. And thank you to all the members. Be here. I don't know if he wants to be oh, okay. on. There he is. That's, that's the office. Jessica says hi to my people, please. <laughs> What's up, dear one? Oh my God, piano. I love piano. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's one of the founders, so, is yeah, it? it? Yeah, he's... Um, oh, there he is, yeah. <laughs> oh, and Kat makes an appearance. Bye, Kat. We love you so much, and we can't wait to see you again. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> oh, my God, you're so beautiful. Oh, yay. <laughs> it was such a yeah, pleasure. It's... Thank you, Boris, so much. We talk yeah. again soon. And thank yeah. you, everyone so who tuned in. Websites. That's basically the last words. And uh, yeah, let us know in the comments and, and send us questions. We'll open it up for next week. Why not? Fruithaven.org. Check them out. Lots of love, everyone. Yes. Bye, Perfect. Boris. Peace. Bye. Yeah.